that you will move in this place, Lord. You promise us that your word will not return unto you void. So, Lord, bless us this afternoon. That when all is said and done, Lord, indeed we will say, yes, we have heard a word from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. So, the people of Mount Grace, I want to say to you, happy Sabbath. What you are saying? I want to say to the people of Mount Grace, happy Sabbath. You know, we have identified in Revelation chapter 12 that the dragon, the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived who? The whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angel were cast out with him. So the Bible said that he deceived the whole world. Why am I coming from? The reason why I'm saying happy Sabbath, based upon the scripture, the Bible said the morning and the evening was the first day. But the, the, the devil deceived the world and telling us that it's, the day starts at 12 o'clock. 12 midnight and the dark. But the Bible said that the morning and the evening was the first day. So we want to tell the people of, of Mount Grace, happy Sabbath. Because it, the, this, the, um, the Sabbath has begun at the set of the sun. So with all further ado, we want to welcome the children that they will sing a, a song for us this afternoon. Mm -hmm. We're sorry for starting so late. But based upon the scripture, the Bible says all things work together for good for those who love and call by his name. There is someone this afternoon the Lord wants to hear. A, they, he wants them to hear a word. He wants them to hear a word. So he allow some, they allow us to reach here late for some reason or the other. Someone this afternoon can get deliverance this afternoon.
Amen, amen. In a little while, brethren, the people of Mount Grace, in a little while, as the children say, in a little while, we will be going home. Let nothing in this world hold you back, brethren. Don't let nothing in this world avoid or, or, or hold you back from wanting to go home with our Lord and Savior. He promised us in my Father's house there are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. God have gone to prepare a place, brethren. He said, eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard. Neither went into the imagination the things that God have gone to provide for those that love him. You can think of what the most beautiful place that is upon this earth. It cannot compare to that place that God has gone to prepare for us. So I pray that you and I will prepare our hearts and prepare ourselves to go home with Jesus. Because why? In a little while, we are going home. You want to welcome our dear brother to do a scripture reading for us this afternoon. Read. Read your Bible. Pray every day. And we shall grow, grow, grow. Again this evening, Mongers, we invite you, wherever you are, to take your Bibles, if you are listening to us, as we turn our Bibles to Daniel, yeah. Daniel chapter 3. As we read, we'll have a better understanding of what the Word of God says for ourselves. Amen. So we invite you to read as we read in your hearing. You can just follow. And as usual, before we read the scripture, we are advised to say a word of prayer so that the Holy Spirit could lead us and teach us. Heavenly Father, once more we communicate with you, dear God, as we pray. It is our privilege to speak to you, and as we read your word, you speak back to us. And so we thank you this evening again, so that we can invite the community of Mongers to read it with us, even as we communicate with you, dear God, as you answer us. In Jesus' name, amen. So we turn our Bibles again to Daniel chapter 5. <laughs> Daniel chapter 5. Yeah. Daniel chapter 5 and we begin from verse 1. And it says, Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, while he tested, tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden, and, the golden and silver vessels which his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem that the king and the princes and his wife and his concubine may drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple, out of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wife and his concubine drink in them. Then drank wine, they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man, hands, and wrote over against the candlesticks upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. 
And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thought troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loose, and his knees smote one against another. Amen. And the king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, and the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read these writings and show them, show me the interpretation thereof, shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of coal about his neck and shall be third ruler in the kingdom. Then came all the king's wise men but could not read the writing, nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Then was King, Nebuch then was king Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lord was a stone, stunned. Now the queen, by reason of the word of the king, and his lord came into the banquet house, and the thought troubled thee, Lo, let, the, let thy countenance be changed. There's a man in the kingdom, in thy kingdom, there is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods, and in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father, made, made master of, of the Magician, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubt were found in the same Daniel, whom the king made named Bel Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jerusalem, I have even heard of thee, that the spirit of the gods in, is in thee, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. And now, the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, that they should read this, this writing and made known unto me the interpretation thereof, but they could not show the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of thee, that thou can make interpretation and dissolve doubt. Now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, Thou shalt be clothed with scarlet, and have a chain of gold about thy neck, and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Daniel answered, and said before the king, Let thy gift be to thyself, and give thy reward to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king, and make known the 
made known to him the interpretation. O thou king, the most high God, gave Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor, and for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and language trembled and fear before him, whom he would, he slew, and whom he would, he kept alive, and whom he would, he set up, and whom he would, he put down. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was disposed of his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the son of men and his heart was made like, a, like the beast and his dwelling was with the wild asses, they fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. And thou, son of Belshazzar, and thou, his son, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thy heart, though thou knewest all this, but has lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and that and they have bro brought the vessels of his house before thee, O thou, and thy lords and wives, and concubines have, it, have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the God, the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and some and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the God in And the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose all are all thy ways, has thou not glorified? Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and his writing was written. And this is the writing that is writ that was written. Mini, mini, tikel of first a person. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mini, God had numbered the, thy kingdom and finished it. Tikel, thou art weighed in the balance and are found wanting. Pierce. Thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck, and made the proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night, was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain, and Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about three scores and two years old. Amen. 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 Here ends our reading for this evening. You will now listen to the word of God as our dear sister brings to you this evening's yeah. word. Amen? Amen. 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 
So good evening again to Mongrace. Good evening. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity of being here again. We thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace towards us. Father, we cannot do anything of our own selves, but we depend upon you. I pray, Lord, as we discuss your word, that your Holy Spirit will go forth and touch the hearts of the people at Mount Grace here, and that those who have not surrendered unto you will do so, Father, before it's eternally too late. So continue to be with all of us. Help, Lord Jesus, because we know that you love us with an everlasting love. Continue to be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So yesterday, we would have discussed concerning the first angel's message, which is found in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 6 and 7. Now we just want to discuss God's word today, right? What was discussed on day one is God does not want us to be deceived. And we know in this world that we are living in have so many false doctrines. Many are deceived. But thank God he has preserved his word for you and I that whosoever believe it doesn't matter rich or poor black or white male or female child whosoever believe god is willing to save Amen. so we want to look at the second angel's message which is found in revelation chapter 14 and verse 8 and i really pray that the scripture reading that was read just now there that we would have been paying close attention to the words of daniel chapter 5 because it plays a key part in what we are going to discuss today. So the word of the Lord says in Revelation 14, 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So as I said here, we are going to do a little open-air Bible study, right? So we are going to discuss based on history, based on the Bible, and where we are, and the role we play in history, in today's life. Let me start by saying we are living in a time that it is clear to see that something strange is about to take place. If the pandemic did not open up our eyes, we can rest assured that something else will come. If that earthquake in Turkey did not open up our eyes, which over 50,000 people lost their lives, then we can rest assured that something else is about to take place. If the crime limit, brethren, does not open up our eyes, we know for a certainty that something else will take place and that is why we need to prepare ourselves and it's impossible for you and i to be prepared without the man christ jesus so something strange is about to take place and all around us brethren we are seeing changes subtly but yet still progressive changes and because of that we are all looking to see what we should do next. Now everything seems to be in a state of confusion. The schools are in confusion. The churches are in confusion. The homes are in confusion. But we are here today with a message of hope. Because without a shadow of a doubt, this last warning to the world which is found in Revelation 14 is a message of hope. Now we are here with a message that contains light. Let us keep in mind that light and darkness will never be able to harmonize. 
We know that Satan represents the kingdom of darkness. And Jesus represents, in contrast to him, the kingdom of light. Amen. So God wants us to walk in that light. In John 1, it tells us that Jesus is that light. Now, to uphold and defend the one brethren, and all will obviously be an attack or overthrow the other. That's why we have to make up our minds. It's either we are walking in darkness or we are walking in the light. A line needs to be drawn just like the line that would have been drawn by Moses. And a decision, all of us, we need to come to a point where we can make an intelligent decision. Now our Savior himself declared, I came not to send peace, but a sword. The truth will always divide. Christ has said in Matthew 24, take heed that no man deceive you. Now one may ask the question, who is about around the place in this world trying to deceive us? Now Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 it says, and that great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. So we can see there that Satan wants to deceive the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth. Where are we living? On planet earth. And his angels were cast out within him. With, with him, sorry. And that is why we are seeing division in the home. Because Satan is here. That is why we are seeing division in the school and in the churches and all over. But thank God he has, he has sent his only begotten son to give all of us an opportunity where we can be rebind to him. Now, it is Satan which deceived the world. Let us be clear about that. But God wants to set us free. God gave John a vision. And in this vision, he saw the whole world or a very large number of people in the last days worshipping the dragon. Revelation chapter 13 verses 3 and 4 it reads, And I saw one of his head as it was wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So we have established that the dragon is Satan. And it is that same Satan who wants to deceive you and I. Because God loves us, however, he wants to save us. He sends a message in love which is embodied within the three angels' message. Now everyone needs to hear this. Once we are living in the, in the last days, God will allow us to hear it. Just like Noah, brethren, as we would have discussed the first day that we came, that Noah had a message, an end time message for his time. That message that the world is about to be destroyed with a flood and God gave Noah 120 years to preach and to warn the people. At the end of that, how many people that we saw went into the ark? The Bible records it was only eight. It was Noah, his wife, his three sons and, the, and their wives. Eight people. So we want to make sure Today, the message of God's love is, speak, is spoken into your ear. That if it should only have eight people in Mount Grace to be saved, I pray by the grace of God that you will destined to be part of that eight. Amen. Now, a message also went out to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. The angels came, they talked a lot, and they told us, that the Lord is about to rain down fire upon this city because it was evil. All manner of sin was practiced there. 
Though Lot lingered, he hesitated. We still see that the mercies of God's love was extended to him. And he made it out alive. Unfortunately, his wife did not. So we have a message. And we have felt the conviction of the Lord to come and share with you this message tonight. Amen. Now let us reiterate Revelation chapter 14 and verses 6 to 12. That is, that we, is Revelation chapter 14 from 6 to 12. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, king, dread, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made the heaven the earth and the sea and the fountains of water. And there follow another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of her wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them saying, with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the same, sorry, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angel and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image. And whosoever received the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So we are heard and we want to zone in to angel number two. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Many times when we hear about the book of Revelation, sometimes we get frightened and think that it's a book that is filled with all sets of imagery that cannot be understood. But the word itself tells us that it is revealed. That God has given us revelation. He has revealed it unto us living in these last days. We are looking at Babylon. So Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to Help us to understand your word in Jesus' name. Amen. All through history, brethren, ancient Babylon have always been opposed to God. Now, Babylon, brethren, you know, sometimes we associate the word Babylon with the holy system, but we are not talking about that. We are talking about biblically Babylon. When we look at Genesis chapter 11, we see there the account of the Tower of Babel. Now we all know how it happens. First, the, the, the um, Noah. Noah, after the flood, after he had preached and all these things, the flood came. And after that, they began to repopulate the earth. But because history is always repeated in the air of the, of the offspring, some of them did not want it to associate themselves no more with God's people. So what did they do? They took off and the Bible said that they went on the plain of Shinar, on the bank of the river Euphrates, and they started building a city. They started building a what? A city. a city. Now, the name of that city is Babylon. Was Babylon. Now, Babel. Thank you. Now, now the whole object of this building that they were erecting, this city, was to turn the hearts of men away from God. Also, the minds of the future generation 
and to lead the people into what is called idolatry. Now, we know that the word idolatry is uh, the worship of idols. Yes. Right? They were erecting a tower so that if the Lord would have sent a flood again, that they would have gone into the tower because the Bible said it reached to the sky. That they would have gone inside this tower and they would have been saved. Hmm. No longer did they trust God because we can clearly see that after the flood and Noah and his family came out, God placed a rainbow in the sky and that symbolized that I will not destroy the earth by a flood again. Amen. But they did not believe in God and nor would they believe in his word. So what they did, they continued to build this tower. The people now secure apartments in this tower due to history based on the Tower of Babel. And within this tower, they had rooms designated for their, their gods of gold, the gods of stone, the gods of silver and of clay and all these things. But eventually, God was displeased with their work. And he confounded their language and that is why they couldn't finish that tower. And they were dispersed all over the world. Because of that building of the tower, because it stopped, the people were scattered and the tower was called the Tower of Babel, which means confusion. There the word Babylon was originated. So the word Babylon came from the word Babel, which means confusion. Now we are looking, brethren, at the fall of ancient Babylon because this message for the last day is Babylon is fallen, is fallen. So at the time of the fall of the Babylonian Empire, in the days of Daniel, just as our brother had read, the, uh, the, the empire, sorry, fell to the Medes and the Persians. So if we read in, in Daniel, we will see first it was Babylon, and then the Medes and the Persians came and took over, besieged, and then Greece, and then Rome. So we learn there that in Daniel 5, and I'm going to read verses 3 to 4. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of the Lord, which was in Jerusalem. So here we have Belshazzar throw a feast. And if the feast wasn't good enough, he sent, because he had invited his wives and his concubines and all his friends, he actually called for the, the vessels, sacred vessels from Jerusalem to be brought. And the Bible says they drank wine in them. They drank wine in them. So after they have drank wine and they would have dedicated their worship to false God, God vessels was now desecrated. So instead of holy things being placed in God's sacred vessels, Babylonian wine were placed there and drank by idolaters. Now after brethren, the Bible goes on to tell us that he saw something. It says he saw a hand. And that hand starts writing on the wall. And the Bible said Belshazzar got so frightened that his loins were loose and his knees shook. No one in his kingdom could have interpreted that writing. And that is why we can see something very, very important because although no one in his kingdom could have interpreted that writing, Daniel was called. And I was sharing with my husband this morning, that is very, very serious because we think that the government can deal with the crime situation. They can't. We think that we can deal with the situation. We will not be able to. 
But just as Daniel was called, it's the same thing that we as a people need to call on the name of our Lord. And then we will see some changes. Then everything will be easily understood. So Daniel was called. And Daniel reminded Belshazzar concerning his grandfather. And he told him that Nebuchadnezzar, his heart was not to, of, um, of God. He told him all the things that Nebuchadnezzar would have done. He told him how Nebuchadnezzar had to stay out in the field for seven years. Because his heart, pride, was in his heart. And he acknowledged not the Lord. But Daniel also told him that Nebuchadnezzar came to his senses. And he was actually admonishing Belshazzar to do the same. Hmm. But he went on to tell Belshazzar, Oh, Belshazzar, has not humbled thine heart. And that is very, very crucial. Mongrace, God wants all of us to humble our hearts towards him. Amen. That is the only way we can be saved. By being humble to God. We cannot fix anything in our lives. It's only Jesus can do that. Amen. But did Belshazzar listen? He told him the meaning of the handwriting upon the wall. He told them it means meanie, meanie, tickle, you farson. He went to tell him that meaning that God had numbered the kingdom and finished it. Hmm. He said, Tekel, thou art weighed in the balance, says, and found wanting. And he tell him, Paris, thy kingdom is divided. And that is why Medes and the Persian came and besieged Babylon that very same night. Although hearing all this good information, he still did not prepare himself. I really pray that that is not you and I. After hearing all that the Lord is telling us in this time, I pray that we prepare our hearts because Jesus is about to come. Amen. Now anything, brethren, that is confusion... In a spiritual sense, it's Babylon. All idolatry is Babylon. God does not want us to serve other gods. God does not even want us to place material things before him. Amen. All messages that leads the mind away from the creator God in a spiritual sense is Babylon. Amen. And that is why we have to test everything with the word of God. Amen. Any system of this world, brethren, once opposed to God is Babylon. Confusion. And this is the message of Revelation chapter 14, verse 7. Let us read what Jeremiah 51, 7 and 9 has to say. Jeremiah 51, Seven to nine. Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunk, drunken. The, the nation have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nation are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroy, howl for her, take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. Verse 9. We will have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her, and let us go everyone into his own country. For her judgment reached unto heaven, and it's lifted up even to the skies. So here we see in Jeremiah 51 that God is telling us something. Because Babylon had made the nations mad, 
with the wine, which is false doctrines, God is actually telling us to forsake it. Because God cannot save us in our sin, brethren. He came to save us from our sins. Amen. So we cannot hold on to anything and expect us to be saved. God is telling us forsake Babylon. Anything of a confusion, forsake it. Because why? Her sins have reached up to the sky. At this point, brethren, I want to share two scripture books so we can understand some prophetic terms. Now, when we see the word she or woman in prophecy, it is actually representing the church. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 2, it reads, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. The daughters of Zion, God's church, as a woman in prophecy. So a pure woman, brethren, will represent a pure church. And a harlot will obviously represent the church of Satan. Now also when we look at wine in prophecy, when we read it in the context of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it talks about the blood of Christ. But however, this wine here is given to make people drunk. So it cannot be the blood of Christ. Because God doesn't want us to be drunk, he wants us to be sober. So in prophecy, wine there will represent that false doctrines that gets all of us confused in the first place. Now, what does Proverbs 31, 4 and 5 it says? Now we are quoting this scripture and I really pray that we go and revisit our script, our Bible to make sure what we are saying is true. It says, it is not for kings. Oh, Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for prince strong drink. Least they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. When we encourage or indulge in false doctrines, brethren, it will just lead us away from God's law. And there is where Satan wants us. He wants us to move away from God's law and do as thou wilt. We know all good governments have laws. And heaven also have a government. And God has given us laws to safeguard us. Amen. God has given us a law, so it has nothing to do with legalism. But God has given us laws to safeguard us. That is why he's telling us, don't serve other gods. Because I am a jealous God. That is why he tells the children, honor thy mother and thy father. Because if he didn't say that, how would our children know it's, it's to honor us as parents? So true. Drinking wine causes us to forget the law of God. Nowhere in scripture it says that God's law had been abolished. Nowhere. In other words, brethren, partaking of false doctrines cause us to forget the law, which is the law, which is his God's character. We have looked, brethren, at that ancient Babylon. And it's very, very important to recognize that keeping God's law is not legalism. But it's because God wants us to live a certain way. Just like in the home. We will have rules for our children to follow. And we will expect them to keep those rules. Amen. And when they disobey, we discipline them. Amen. So God is not less than us. He is above us. 
So he also has rules for us to follow. Now let us look at Revelation chapter 17. Because we want to make sure we understand Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Revelation chapter 17, and I'm reading from verse 1, it reads, And they came, Father, you continue to add blessing upon your word. And it came, and there came one of the seven angels, which had seven vials, and talked with me, John is saying, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit, John is saying, into the wilderness. And I saw a woman, so John is telling us, the spirit of God or the angels carry him away in the spirit and he saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of the name blasphemy having seven head and ten horn. Verse 4 says, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Having a golden cup in her hand, full of abomination and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery Babylon. So John is seeing this. And the book of Revelation is for the last days. John is saying that he saw this woman and her name was Mystery Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots and abomination of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. Remember we read in Jeremiah 6 that a woman in prophecy represents a church. A pure woman, church of God. A harlot, the church of Satan. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, John is saying, I wondered with great admiration. Now this, the Bible is talking about this city which reigned over the kings of the earth is none other than Rome. Now the seven hill city, and we can see it there in the Bible, we can see it there in history, has given its name to the power which succeeded its dominion. Remember in Daniel, we read first it was Babylon, then it was Medo-Persia, then it was Greece, and then it was Rome. Pagan Rome, and then Papal Rome. Now, the organization which is represented by this woman is the Church of Rome ruled by the papacy. Now, the word papacy, it actually means the office of the Pope. <coughs> now, in verse 6 it reads, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. In order to understand that, we need to go back in history. If you take your phone or your computer and type up the dark ages, we will see there where the church of Rome persecuted God's people. Drunk with the blood of the saints. So ancient Babylon, religion had immoral features. The worship this and the worship that. But modern day Babylon commits spiritual fornication with all these introductions, with dogmas, false doctrines that deceive many. Now God wants us to be wise. God wants us to take time and not just read the Bible, but to study it. God wants us to play 
clean attention with our salvation. The word of the Lord says, study to show yourself approved unto God. And not only that, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So let us not commit our salvation in the hands of men. Amen. Because Amen. men could somehow be pliable. One minute we believe in that, one minute we believe in something else. But once we place our, our belief upon the word of the Lord, the Bible says not one jot or one tittle will fail from God's word. So we are looking here, brethren. The dark ages is where God's people were persecuted by the, the church of Rome. Now we are living in a world that is filled with false doctrines and we need to be careful. We need to be careful what we watch, what we listen to. We need to be careful what our children is watching and what they are listening to. So there are so many false doctrines in this world. Doctrines such as spiritualism. And we would have talked about that on day one. That sometimes we go to a funeral and hear that our loved ones are in a better place. Which the Bible totally condemn because the dead knows nothing. We hear lots and lots of false doctrine that the solemnity of the Sabbath was transferred from the Sabbath, the Saturday to the first day of the week. We hear doctrines like we are saved by works and that we can pay our way to heaven. So many false doctrines. And if we are not careful, we will be deceived. That is why Matthew 24 tells us, beware least any man deceive you. So what do we do? What do we do? God has, tell us, has told us within his word, study to show ourselves approved unto God. So if we seem to be confused, God is telling us study. When we are studying, we need to pray and ask the Lord for his Holy Spirit to teach us Amen. that we will have the right understanding of the word of God. Because I can read my Bible. You can read your Bible and both of us reading the same book and understanding something totally different. Once it is contradicting each other, something is wrong. That is why we need to pray for the Holy Spirit to teach us. There is many Babylonian influence out in this world. However, it is very essential that we identify the end time Babylon. Because we need to understand that Babylon is fallen, is fallen. We need to know what we need to come out of. Amen. Now we want to read Revelation chapter 18 verses 1 to 5. <coughs> Revelation 18, 1 to 5. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power, and the, and the earth was lighted with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the and whole of every foul spirit, and the courage of every unclean and hateful, hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of her wrath, of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants and the, and the merchants of the earth were wax rich through her abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that he 
be not partakers of her sin, and that he receive not of her plagues. For her sin have reached unto heaven, and, and God has remembered her iniquity. So God is telling us that that same, and this is the fourth angel, that fourth angel had a message which is really repeating with more power the message of the second angel. And that message is telling us, come out of her. God has identified us as my people. So God is saying, listen, my people in Mount Grace, God is calling us out of any Babylonian system. But the Bible also said, concerning an unclean and hateful bird. We all can remember when Jesus was baptized in Jordan by John. And when he came up, it says the Spirit of God ascended upon him in the form like a dove. Amen. Now Satan tries to replicate everything God does. So here we have God with the true Holy Spirit and Satan now is going to try to counterfeit God's Holy Spirit. And that is why in the last days we're going to see lots and lots of miracles that has nothing to do with God. Lots and lots of teachings that have nothing to do with God. Verse 3 tells us that this false system of worship had fed its followers with wine which we already established as false doctrines. Now, let me tell you something. Anytime we hear anything, instead of just accepting it as truth, let us go back to the word of the Lord. Amen. And if we see it there, then we can accept it as truth. But if we do not see it there, with the teachings of the Holy Spirit, then that which we have heard could be disregarded as error. That is the only how, brethren, we will be the safeguard against errors. Now, brethren, verse 4 is where hope is found in Revelation 18. God is saying, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. So that tells us that God have his people everywhere. God have his people everywhere. But we will not be able to stay in false systems of worship and still be considered as God's people after we have heard the call. Come out of her, my people. And why do we need to come out? The Bible tells us because if we don't, we will be partakers of the plagues that is about to fall. That is why God is warning us. In Noah's time, the flood came. Everyone on the outside died. Every animal, every boy, every girl, every child, every mother, every father. In Solomon Gomorrah, everyone in the city died. Doesn't matter their age. It doesn't matter their religious status. It doesn't matter their banking account. Everyone died. And it's the same thing today. If we do not come to Christ, it doesn't matter where we work, where we live. It doesn't matter. We will perish when those plagues begin to fall. Just to clarify, brethren, the message we see in Revelation 14 it's a warning against mystery Babylon as well as seen in Revelation 13. We can also see it in other passages of scripture like Revelation 13, 17, and 14. Now the church is also described as a harlot. The church of Satan that is. Now everyone knows what is a harlot. A harlot is someone who does not regard laws. When we look at a marriage now, 
Anytime we go out of that marriage covenant physically and go with someone else, we can be considered as a harlot. Now let us look at it in a spiritual sense. Anytime we disregard the laws of God and willingly don't regard it and break it, we are also in the sense of a harlot because we do not respect God's law. Now God is telling us in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. It is very important to know, brethren, that Jesus has laws for us. And his law, as the Bible said, is not grievous. His law is not grievous. Because if we are regarding God's law as grievous, then our law, or laws towards our children is also grievous. And then we're supposed to have no laws for our children. But because we serve the creator God, and because he has created us, he knows what is best for us. And that is why he has given us laws. Now, we are going back a little as we wrap up. Now, during the early Christian centuries, Jewish and Christian literature refers to the city of Rome as Babylon. Where could we find that? In the book First Peter 5.13, it says, Peter wrote these words while in Rome. At the time that literal Rome was already no more in existence. And he said, the church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, salute you. And so does Marcus, my son. So while Peter was in Rome, he wrote, and says, the church in Babylon salute you. So even in Peter's time, he refers to Rome as Babylon. What about um, literatures? In 1980, we have this James Cardinal Gibbons, Faith of Our Father, 111th printing in us, it writes, even the Catholic acknowledges as a court, Babylon, from which Peter addressed his first epistle, is understood by learning and annotators, Protestants and Catholic, so referred to Rome. The word Babylon being symbolic of the corruption then prevailing in the church of the Caesars. So we see here in Bible, Babylon is referred, Rome is referred as Babylon, and even in 1980, it is still referred as the same. So we want to really revisit that call, brethren. God wants us out. God wants to save us. God today is calling you and he is calling me out of these systems of false worship. Why? Because these systems have fallen. It has failed and refused to surrender to God. Are we also stiff-necked people? God is calling us to accept him. God is calling us because he wants to save us. God does not want us to, to, to be destroyed. God said, I delight not when the wicked perish. But rather, he wants us to turn from our wickedness and to surrender to him. 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly divided 
the word of truth. Friends, it is not about legalism or condemnation. It is all about truth. And God says we will know the truth and the truth shall make us free. So if we want to become free, we have to understand and accept truth. Although it may be painful to accept truth at times, the truth will always remain as the truth. God wants to save us. And for that to happen, we need to know the truth. Amen. It is Babylon's system of religious structures aligned against God is what is condemned. Not the people. So God is not about condemning people. But the systems are condemned. And because the systems are condemned, we need to forsake it. We need to forsake it. When we look, brethren, at the prodigal son, we see here that the prodigal, that this father had two sons. And anything that they had, they could have received. But one day, one of the sons wanted a different type of life. No longer he wanted to be restricted to his father's home or his father's duty. No longer he wanted to take his father's command. And he decided to leave. When he left, the Bible said that he wasted all he had in riotous living. So he would have, he would have done all that he wanted to. And eventually... His money ran out. But then the Bible said when he came to his senses, he recognized that even the servants in his father's house had more to eat than he did. And he said, I am going back home. And I am going to repent and ask my father to take me as one of his hired servants. And while the Bible said while he was going, his father was watching for him. And that could be you today. We know that Jesus is daily watching for you to come back unto him. Amen. We might have been in the world doing what we want. But God is waiting with his hands wide open to accept you and I back. The Bible said that his father was waiting and he saw him from a distance and he ran to him. And while the son was trying to repent, the father looked past his sin and ordered his servants to, create, to prepare a big feast. He said he placed clothes upon him. That is what Jesus wants to do with us today. He doesn't want us to look at our sin, that which we have committed and is still committing, but he wants to look past that. He wants to welcome you back and give you the position that is rightfully yours. Amen. What position is that? That we can be called sons and daughters of God. Amen. Satan tries to condemn us for the things that we have done, but not God. We serve a God of love. But in all the brethren, for us to inherit the kingdom of God, we need to acknowledge our sins. And we need to repent. Now the word repent does not only mean saying you are sorry to God. But it means that we have to be willing to forsake our sins. And God will accept. So I encourage us all brethren. I leave with one scripture that is found in Romans 5.8. The word of the Lord says God commended his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. So while we were doing all.
all that we were, we are doing, Christ died for you. That is to show how much he loves us. He died for you and I. Just like the man on the cross. The Bible said he was a criminal. But even on his death cross, he turned to Christ and said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus gave him that assurance. He said, today, thou will be with me. I say unto you today, thou will be with me in paradise. Amen. That hope is for all of us, Mount Grace. That once we remain faithful to God, come out of Babylon, forsake our ways, we will be with God in paradise. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 You want to thank Sister Bishop for that word? Amen. I pray that the people of Mount Grace will not allow the word of God to return unto them void, but that it will do a work in each one of us, that we will see our true condition and see that we have we that how much we need to accept our Lord and Savior. Now, if I should ask this before we close to the people of Mount Grace, what the Lord means to you. You will say, I'm sure that you, have, you, have, uh, you and I will say that the Lord means everything to me. Yeah. That he is, he is my provider. He is my, he is my, he is my rock. But God is saying in Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. If God means all this to you, hear what he's saying. A son honored his father and a servant his master. If then I be your father, where is my honor? And if I be your master, where is my fear? God is saying to you and I, if I mean so much to you, why are you not honoring me? Why are you not honoring me? And if I mean, if I mean all that to you, why do you not fear me? And God said that here he's calling us back to fear him and to reverence him and to obey him and to do whatever he asks us to do. That is why he said that if you say that you love me so much, if you say that you love me so much, love is a two side. God is saying, God proves his love towards us. By sending his son to die for us, he's telling us today, this afternoon, if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. So God is calling each one of us. He's telling us, he's calling us back. He's calling us back to fear him and to give glory to him. And to worship him who made the heaven, the earth, and the sea, and the fountains of water. We identify yesterday that worship including on the Sabbath day. Because he tell us clearly, six days shall thou labor. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy strain. That is what? Within thy gates. So therefore you ought to have control within your gate. For in six days the Lord made what? The heaven, the earth, and the sea, and the fountains of water. So God is calling us back. That we hear it is that he's telling us, if I mean so much to you, I have set up a day that, we, that I ought to meet with you. It's just like a relation, just as a, as a marriage covenant. You, just as you set up a day to get married, it's so God set up a day to meet with us as his children. He said, hollow my Sabbath, for it's a sign between who? Me and you, throughout your generation, that he may know that I am the Lord that sanctifies us. So God is saying that by keeping the Sabbath, we identify that we are worshiping the creator God and not creation. So tomorrow, please go when we come out. We will identify, brethren. We will see. We see that the Sabbath is God's sign. And tomorrow, please God, we, we will identify what is the mark of the beast. Yeah. This afternoon, we identify Babylon and the call that God has made to us.
to come out of her, my people. Go say, all the sheep that I have that is not of this fold, he will call us. I pray that each individual will be obedient. I pray that God will mean everything to you. Just as a parent desire obedience from the children, and so God desire the same thing for each one of us. That if we consider him as our heavenly father, and we are his children, he requires from us obedience. And he tell us clearly that, um, that the Sabbath day, we ought to keep it. He also tell us that we need to come out from Babylon. Come out from the false system. False doctrine that leading us away from God. So I want to thank the people of God, um, Mount Grace. Thank you for listening here. We thank you. We thank you. So that's before we go, we will just close with a word of prayer. I want to ask our dear sister to close us off with a word of prayer. Amen. Let us bow our uh, um, head and close our eyes for prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord. We thank you for your words. We thank you for your Holy Scripture, dear Lord. Yes, yes. Lord whereby we can learn truth and that your Holy Spirit can speak to us. We pray even as we have heard your words, dear Lord, we ask that you take away our stony hearts yes. and give us a heart of flesh. Yes, Lord. Give us the willingness, dear Lord Father, to be obedient. Mm -hmm. Help us, dear Lord Father, to will to do your will. Yes, Lord. We pray for the people of Mount Grace, dear Lord, those who have heard their Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would continue to knock upon their hearts and help them to be closer drawn to you. Yes, Lord. Help us, dear Lord Father, to be a blessing to those around us. Yes, Guide us, keep us, even throughout this holy Sabbath day, that we would keep it holy, that we would have the health and the strength to come back tomorrow to do your work, yes. and that those who are here would once again listen and heed it to your call. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.